Say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. It's great to see everybody here tonight. It's always a good thing to gather together with fellow believers and to just spend time encouraging one another and studying God's Word. And tonight, I think we get to have a special bit of encouragement. This weekend has been our LTC Leadership Training for Christ weekend, where all of our young men and and a lot of the girls as well have been training for things that they can do in service to the kingdom. Uh, So tonight you're going to get to see a sampling of our young men who have been working on song leading and scripture reading and delivering speeches and devos. And then we've got several people that will be doing some signing for the deaf as well. Uh, And I think that's always a real treat to get to see what they do. It's a beautiful language, sign language, uh, to watch. So this evening, um, if you don't have one already, we have these programs that are just outside the doors on the the small tables in between the doors. So if you want to get one of those, uh, you can do that now. Uh, But otherwise, I think this is going to be a good service to get to listen to and encourage and be encouraged by these young men that have been working in service to the King. Uh, So we'll we'll begin now and we'll we'll have a word of prayer and then uh, we'll begin with scripture reading. So let's pray together. Lord, we are so thankful for your love for us, for your grace and mercy extended to us through the blood of Jesus on the cross. And we're so thankful for these young people that are dedicating themselves to you now in training to serve you and to serve you better and to develop their skills and their talents in your, in your service, uh, that they can use us as they grow wherever they end up in church, uh, that they can serve the body there. And because we know that we need people uh, that are willing to take that role, that are willing to stand up and to lead. And we ask that you would uh, bless them and fill them with your spirit and just watch over them in their journey of life, uh, that they will stay faithful and that they will, they will be uh, mighty servants in your kingdom, as we all hope to be as well. Again, we're so thankful for Jesus, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. I will be reading from James 2, verse, chapter 2, verses 14 through 26 from the NIV version, which talks about faith and deeds. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you, ke- wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe and shudder. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does, and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. In Koine Greek, with which the Bible was written, there were four different words that all had different meanings about relationships. In English, we have one word for those four different meanings, and that word is love. Because we have one word for four Greek words, it can cause some confusion in our understanding of the Bible. The two Greek words we will discuss today are agape and phileo. Phileo love is friendship or brotherly love. Agape love is the love of God, which is perfect and conditional. John 15, 9 through 10 reads, As the Father loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. The word for love in these verses is agape. 
Being in God's agape love is the only way we can get to heaven. And in order to be in his agape love, we have to obey all of his commands at the best of our ability. The world knows that God is love, but what they don't always understand is what kind of love God is and has for us. I saw a t-shirt online. It said, Jesus is my homeboy. If somebody is your homeboy, they are your best friend. You'd expect your best friend to like you, have things in common with you. When you get in trouble, you expect your best friend to stick up for you. You don't expect to obey your best friend. Jesus is a perfect friend, and we may have phileo love for him, but he is not just our homeboy. We can't just like Jesus until he lets us into heaven, and he won't just feel friendship for us and let us into heaven. In fact, Jesus even limits his friends to those who obey him. In John 15, verse 14, he says, You are my friends if you do what I command. I think what the Gospel of John is trying to tell us is that you can't phileo your way to heaven. If you think about it, when we intentionally are disobeying his commands, we are actually attempting to phileo our way to heaven. We expect to be able to disobey Jesus, but have him stick up for us on Judgment Day, even though he has told us that our disobedience moves us out of our friendship status with him. We all want friends. We even friend each other on social media devices because the, other, the, other, the idea of other people liking us is important to us. But maybe if we love each other with God's perfect and conditional love, we can build our lives on friendships that are more valuable than just surrounding ourselves with homeboys. If we look at one of the best friendships in the Bible, we can see that people can love each other with agape. We're going to talk about some friends from the Old Testament. One of them is the son of a king. Yep, you guessed it, David and Jonathan. In 1 Samuel chapters 19 and 20, it talks about how Jonathan's father, Saul, is jealous of David and is afraid that the people will like David more than him. So the devil enters Saul and he starts trying to kill David. Meanwhile, David and Jonathan become friends. When Jonathan notices how Saul is acting, he warns David and even helps him escape. These two remain friends somehow, despite Jonathan's psychotic father. In the Septuagint, the word for their friendship is actually agape. So this proves that we can have agape for each other. And if we can agape other humans, we can definitely have more respect for Jesus than to just call him our homeboy. Now, what can we take away from this? I'll give you three takeaways. Number one, we need to treat God slash Jesus more than just a homeboy and actually agape him. Number two, the obedience part. Number, uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20 reads, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is our main command on what to do. Jesus said it himself. He wasn't just saying it to hear himself talk. If we are obeying him, we are doing everything. We are going, making disciples, baptizing, teaching, and you know what people usually ignore? Verse 20, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That means everything. Now third and finally, we can't just get to heaven with phileo love. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that Jesus is just our friend. He is our master who loves us, but not in the way we typically think of. So to leave you with some encouraging words, I would say keep his commands on your heart. Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 19 says, Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you get up, when you lie down and when you get up.
Why did my Savior come to me? And to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He gave his precious life for me, for me. He loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise and then to glory go and reign with him through endless days because he loved me so. precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name, praise Jehovah in the Thank you. 
His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted, and His glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Girl Scout cookies, the most sinfully sweet treat you'll ever eat. You know how it goes. You start with just one, and you suddenly find that, whoops, the whole box is gone, and you just got to get another to fuel your cravings. Or at least that how it, that's how it is for me. Sin is a lot like a Girl Scout cookie. You start with just one, and then one more, and then one more, and a continuous cycle. And just like Girl Scout cookies, Sin can have some long-term consequences. While binging on Girl Scout cookies could lead to heart disease, sin can lead to much long-term consequences on your soul. And though you may think that sin only leads to suffering after death, it is also a reason that we suffer here on earth. Now, there is no greater love than that of our God. However, some people say that if God is love, then how could he allow good people to suffer? I would suggest to you that even though God is an all-powerful, loving God, he also gives us free will. That free will gives us the ability to disobey God or sin, and that disobedience to God is why we suffer here on earth. Let's take a look back at the origin of our suffering, Adam and Eve. In Genesis chapter 3, we see mankind's first sin against God. Genesis chapter 3, verses 2 through 7 reads, The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. We see here that Adam and Eve blatantly sinned against God, choosing to eat the fruit even after God told them that they would die if they ate it. Satan told them that God had lied to them, and they chose to do what looked good at the time instead of what they knew was good for them in the long run. They decided to eat the cookie and suffer the consequences instead of remaining pure. God then disciplines Adam and Eve for their disobedience, and as a result, the rest of mankind suffers as well. Now, does it mean that God didn't love Adam and Eve because he disciplined them? No, the opposite is true. It was because of his great love for them that they had to suffer. Though cookies taste good, you will suffer in the long run. On the other hand, though vegetables and other healthy foods do not taste nearly as good, you will live a much longer and healthier life. Eating what tastes good versus what's good for you is a choice. Let's take Daniel, for example. He decided to eat vegetables in the king's palace instead of the delicious food from the king's table, and he was blessed for it. In the same way, if we make the choice to eat good spiritual food, we will be blessed in heaven. In our spiritual walk, making the right choices will make us stronger. Even though we do suffer here on earth, our suffering can make us stronger. Take Paul, for example. Paul persecuted Christians, imprisoning them right and left, and then, boom, Paul was blinded. Paul suffered for three days as a blind man, but because he was confronted by the Lord and because he was allowed his sufferings to make him stronger, he became one of the most well-known apostles in the Bible. Paul suffered much for God. He describes his sufferings in 2 Corinthians 11, 24-25. It reads, Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and the day in the open sea. Paul then continues to describe his sufferings that he's gone through as an evangelist and then tells us in chapter 12 that he was given a thorn in the flesh. Three times I plead with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. 
for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Does it mean that God isn't a loving God because he allowed Paul to suffer? No. Paul himself tells us that though he has suffered, he is a stronger Christian for it. Paul suffered, but he was extremely strong in his faith. As Christians, we must have the same mindset as Paul, so while we suffer, we strengthen our faith in God. While sin may be like Girl Scout cookies, we can think of Jesus like our diet and exercise. While eating healthy and working out may not be fun at the time, we know it is good for us in the long run. Without that diet and exercise, we can't realistically think that we can reach our goals. Staying faithful to Jesus by being baptized and following his teachings will help us to reach our end goal. Like healthy versus unhealthy lifestyles, sin versus doing good is a choice. Jesus died for our sins. He suffers for something he didn't even do, and I can't imagine any greater love than that. This next song tonight is a fairly new one, so if you know it, I would encourage you to sing out and praise the Lord. Domi, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from every fear. Those who look on him are radiant. They'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds his saints. He will deliver them. He will deliver them. Magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, blessed is he who hides in him. Oh, fear the Lord, all of you saints. He'll give you everything. He'll give you everything. Magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. Let us bless the Lord every day and night. Never ending praise. May our incense rise. Let us praise the Lord. All you servants, praise the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty hands. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all you 
servants, praise the name of the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. Magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name I will be reading 1 Corinthians 13 about love. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but have not lo- but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all knowledge and all and all mysteries, and I have the faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I am nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will, see, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put my childish ways behind me. For now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. What are you willing to sacrifice to spread the gospel and live out your faith? Across the world, The answer for about 11 Christians a day is everything. That is the estimated number from Open Doors USA of Christians that are killed every day for their love and dedication to the gospel. In John 15, 12, and 13, Jesus tells his disciples, My command is this, Love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus knowing that he was about to lay down his life on the cross, told his disciples to love as he loved. Jesus laid down his life, not to save us from physical death, but from spiritual death. And he commands his disciples to have that same kind of love, the kind of love that is willing to give everything to share the gospel with others. Paul exemplified this kind of love. Paul sacrificed all aspects of his life for the purpose of the gospel. Before becoming a Christian, Paul seemed to have it all. He states in Philippians 3, 4 through 6, If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for righteousness based on the law, faultless. Paul was a respected Pharisee in the Jewish community, as he says in Acts 23, 6, when talking to the Sanhedrin. My brothers, I am a Pharisee, descended from Pharisees. But after persecuting followers of what he called the way, Paul was converted when he saw the blinding light on the road to Damascus and heard Jesus speak to him. After his conversion, he gave the rest of his life to show sacrificial love and give everything he had for the cause of the gospel. 
Paul laid down his life even while he was still living. As he says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Even before he died, he had given his life for the cause of the gospel. Instead of living as a wealthy, respected Jewish religious leader, Paul made a living by making tents while traveling around to different cities and proclaiming the gospel. But not only did Paul sacrifice his life of comfort and respectability, he sacrificed his health because of his love for the lost. When writing to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 27, Paul describes what he has suffered for the cause of the gospel. He says, Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. We see here how much Paul was willing to go through to spread the message. Paul's love for the gospel and preaching it to the people that needed it most came before his own well-being. Nothing could stop him from giving everything he had to save souls. In addition to all the physical trials that Paul suffered for the gospel, he eventually made the ultimate sacrifice. In Paul's emotional farewell to the Ephesian elders, where he is telling them goodbye for what he knows will be the last time before he heads to Jerusalem, he says to them in Acts 20, 23, and 24, I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Although it's not recorded in the Bible, history says that Paul finished his race around 64 AD, when historians tell us he was beheaded by the Romans for his faith. Paul's dedication to his faith resulted in him laying down his life to share the gospel with others. The example of perfect love set by Jesus had a life-changing impact on Paul, and it should have the same impact on us today. Like Paul, we should be willing and ready to lay down our lives for the gospel. While we lament that Christians are being killed for their faith, the even greater tragedy is that many more die without Christ daily. We shouldn't let anything or anyone stop us from spreading the gospel with our words and actions. Paul's society was set against Christians and persecuted them relentlessly. Even across the world today, Christians are dying for their dedication to the gospel. Sadly, in America, we see our society quickly turning away from God and becoming more and more hostile toward Christians. For example, I work at Chick-fil-A, and seven years ago, our founder stated his views on traditional marriage in an interview. Although Chick-fil-A has never been accused of discriminating against people in either service or hiring, there are still people that protest and try to destroy his business. Now, of course, they haven't been successful, and that's because we serve good chicken. But let that example serve as a warning on the direction our country is headed. So the question is, when the going gets tough and your life is on the line, will you be willing to lay down your life to save the spiritual lives of others? If you're here tonight and have not obeyed the gospel and experienced the perfect love of our Savior, we invite you to make that decision tonight. If you have made that decision, but have let the trials and temptations of this world lead you astray, we invite you to come and let us pray with you. Whatever you need, come now as we stand and as we sing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments
garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the lamb when the bridegroom cometh will your robes be white pure and white in the blood of the lamb will your soul be ready for the mansions bright on be washed in the blood of the lamb are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean, Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Got a few announcements here tonight. Um, there are no additional announcements other than what is in uh, the bulletin regarding family news. So if you haven't already, uh, grab a bulletin. Uh, check the information that is in the bulletin, but I do have some additional announcements um, regarding LTC. Um, as Dustin had mentioned earlier, had a great time at the convention uh, downtown. Uh, lots of students participated, um, and of those, a good portion of them are back here tonight. Uh, you got to see our young men leading the service, and so we're grateful to see that. But one of the reasons we do this here uh, back at Waterview is so you, the church, gets a chance to see um, all of the work that all of our students have put into their practices, the coaches uh, that have given their time to help the students, and because it takes a whole church. Uh, it is because your love, your support, um, everything that we can do downtown with this convention and the training that has led up to these last several months um, doesn't happen without our church family. So we want to say thank you uh, to our church family for that. Um, there are a couple that uh, got called back to do uh, some things downtown this morning at the big uh, worship service we had. Chad Cagle uh, led singing this morning, and Emma Cagle uh, did some signing for the deaf. Uh, and so, so it's a great honor to have uh, judges recognize uh, the outstanding efforts on their parts. Um, we have our banquet, uh, which is going to be happening right as soon as we're done on the south end of the building. Uh, I believe a lot of us have already purchased tickets for those. If you haven't yet, we did order some extra food just in case. Uh, just check in with the ladies at that table at the south end of the building, um, and I believe we'll get a chance uh, to get uh, as many as we need to, uh, to eat tonight. So I'd love to see as many of you can uh, to have dinner with us. Um, also, there are a couple things. If you are a visitor, we would ask that you sign uh, the visitor card. It's in the pew back in front of you. If you're a member, if you weren't here this morning, uh, please sign your side of that card and go ahead and place it uh, in the pews, and we'll pick that up later. So the song we're going to sing next uh, is going to be uh, a couple of different things. We're going to stand for this song. Um, if you didn't get a chance to take of communion this morning, we're going to go ahead and dismiss you during the singing of this song to the south end of the building. So you'll have time to take uh, communion before everybody else heads on down there. Um, and also during this song while we're standing, if you are a signer, we're going to ask that you go ahead and walk up here. I know we've got quite a few already close, but any other signers that are out there during the singing of this song, go ahead and walk up here towards the front. And our uh, signers will come up first level one, and then we'll have two, three, and four uh, on that next song as well. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and stand up and uh, sing the song together. Let us adore the ever-living God and render praise unto him who set out the heavens 
and establish the earth, and whose glory is manifest throughout all the earth. He is our God, He is our God, there is no one else. He is our God, He is our God, there is no one else. I praise your name, most high and awesome God, and lift my hands unto you. You saved my soul on a rugged tree, and now I praise you and serve you, Lord, throughout eternity. He is our God, He is our God. There is no one else. He is our God, He is our God. There is no one else. You are my God. You are my God. There is no one else. You are my God. You are my God. There is no one else. And there is no one else. You may be seated. Level one signers, come on up. We'll be singing 359, I Love the Lord, 359. I love the Lord, for he died my soul to save. On Calvary, his dear life he freely gave. From realms of
Next, we will be singing uh, song 147, I Stand Amazed. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul. Before we have a uh, closing prayer, I've got to uh, express a little, uh, little bit with you. I was uh, went down to the LTC this weekend, and if you weren't able to go down there and watch our young people, you missed out. They've worked really hard, and uh, we're on behalf of everyone here. We want to say we are so very proud of each and every one of you for working so hard, and. Uh, for those adults that, as I want to echo what Warren said, that work so hard helping out and, and helping coach, uh, we want to say thank you. And even those that worked hard down there keeping everything organized and, and things going, the, uh, the excitement that was down there was unbelievable. It was crazy at times. Uh, kids running everywhere, but it was nice to see so many young people that were so so happy and enthusiastic to be there it was very overwhelming and it was good to see and and we really we really appreciate all your hard work and all your efforts so uh let's let's bow and have a word of prayer heavenly father we we want to say thank you for such a another wonderful weekend and a blessed day today father we uh we're so grateful for all the blessings that we get each and every day of our lives and we know all blessings come from you and father we pray that our young people will continue to strive to hone their skills and your efforts that they will continue to do the things that will glorify you as they get older and and uh, participate in different events and just live life in general father we're so grateful for them and for all their hard work and father uh we ask that uh, 
as we close, that you be with us and be with us as we share a time of fellowship and we eat and we ask that you bless the food that we're about to receive. And may we always do those things that would glorify you. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.